In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brother and sister, fraternal greetings to you from the Carmelite Fathers and warm welcome to Carmel Light, reflection on the day's readings. It's the 18th of September. Saturday of the 24th week in ordinary time. Today we remember St. Joseph of Cupertino. Over to Larissa to enlighten us more about the saint of the day. On September 18th, the church celebrates the life of St. Joseph of Cupertino, a mystic who was perhaps most famous for his ability to fly. His father, a poor carpenter, died before his birth, and his mother, who was unable to pay the debts, lost her home and gave birth to Joseph in a stable at Cupertino in Italy on June 17, 1603. By all descriptions, Joseph was not a good student. He was described by his early teachers as easily being the dullest child in the village. He was absent-minded awkward and nervous. A sudden noise such as the ringing of a church bell would make him drop whatever he had in his hands. Joseph began having mystical visions when he was seven and was often so lost to the world around him that the other children made fun of him, giving him the nickname Open Mouth for his gaping manner. He had a bad temper and read very poorly giving others the impression that he was dumb and good for nothing. Aside from that, he was so continually drawn into ecstasy that it was impossible for him to be attentive to the tasks at hand. Thus, when he secured a job, he lost it very quickly. He was easily distracted, not always of good disposition, and was given to wandering off. When he was seventeen, a Franciscan friar came into the village begging. His mother thought that if Joseph could not be a student or learn a trade, at least he could be a friar. She approached family members who were already Franciscans, but their local houses were unwilling to entertain the idea of Joseph sharing their life. After knocking on many friary doors, Joseph was accepted by the OFM Capuchins. The brothers found that Joseph was a true test of their patience. Not only was he very dull and difficult to teach, but his fits of piety and abstraction were troublesome. He had a way of suddenly standing still in the midst of some task and forgetting everything. He would go down on his knees in the most unlikely places, utterly oblivious of anything around him. His stay with the Capuchins ended, as had all his previous trades. His mother was not at all pleased to have the 18-year-old Joseph back home again, so she finally got him accepted as a simple servant at the Franciscan monastery. His primary task was working in the stables and taking care of the horses. Slowly, Joseph began to change. He grew more humble and gentle, more careful and successful at his work. He also began to practice penance. After several years of work, he had impressed the local friars with his simplicity, light-heartedness and devotions and was admitted to the Franciscan order. Upon realizing his holiness and aptitude for penance, humility and obedience, it was decided that he could begin studying for the priesthood. Joseph was a very poor student. However, during his final examination, the examiner happened to ask him a question on the one topic he knew well. He passed and was admitted into the priesthood and eventually ordained a priest. It was also soon recognized that though he knew little by way of worldly knowledge and had little capacity to learn, Joseph was infused with a divine knowledge that made him capable of solving some of the most intricate theological quandaries. For the last 35 years of his life as a priest, he was unable to celebrate Mass in public 
because he would often, without being able to help it, be lifted up into the air when he went into an ecstatic state, which happened at nearly every Mass. It took only the slightest reference of anything having to do with God in order for this state to be induced in him. Despite being moved from one friary to another, because of the disruption he caused by his ecstasies and the persecutions he endured from some of his brothers who were envious of his gifts, he remained profoundly inundated by the joy of abandoning himself to divine providence. He died on September 18, 1663 and was canonized in 1767 by Pope Clement XIII. He is the patron of air travelers, pilots, and students preparing for exams. Placing all our petitions before him today, let us pray. God our Father, your wisdom disposed that your only begotten Son, when lifted above the earth, should draw all things to himself. May the merits and example of Saint Joseph help us to rise above earthly desires and become perfectly conformable to your Son who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we continue our reflection on the Gospel of Luke. And today we have chapter 8, verses 4 to 15. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, when a great crowd was gathering and people from town after town came to Jesus, he said in a parable, A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell along the path and was trampled underfoot and the birds of the air devoured it. And some fell on the rock, and as it grew up, it withered away, because it had no moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it. And some fell into good soil and grew in yielded a hundredfold. As he said these things, he called out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And when his disciples asked him what this parable meant, he said, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but for others they are in parables so that seeing they may not see and hearing they may not understand. Now, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The ones along the path are those who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. And the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy. But these have no root. They believe for a while and in time of testing fall away. And as for what fell among the thorns, they are those who hear. But as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. As for that in the good soil, they are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart, and bear fruit with patience. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, 
riches and pleasures. It's easy to see how these can choke off our experience of God's grace. But what about anxiety? Anxiety seems like a bit of an odd man out. Riches and pleasures are attractive and can tempt us away from the Lord. But anxiety works in a different way. Too many bills to pay and not enough money to pay them. A stressful job with too many expectations. Health concerns. Tension within families. Anxiety is a part of everyday life. But then there is extreme anxiety which can dominate our minds. Professional studies have told us that this kind of anxiety can cause us to become physically sick. It can feel as if it's choking us to death. Jesus dealt with everyday anxieties his whole life. He never lost his peace, but he was always being confronted with issues, questions and problems that he had to address. Think about all the times Jesus was confronted with his apostles' worldly thinking. Or what about having to contend with the Pharisees and scribes or opposed him? Surely, Jesus became anxious as he faced the days leading up to his crucifixion. Jesus wants to help us deal with the anxieties of life. He wants to help us keep them in the proper perspective. One of the best ways he helps is by giving us the word of God. Scripture can comfort us. It can tell us that God is with us and that he knows what we are facing because Jesus himself faced it as well. Here are just a few words from scripture that will help you keep anxiety in the right perspective. As you read them, ask Jesus to help you deal with your anxiety. I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? Psalm 27 verse 1 Will these passages make your anxieties vanish completely? Not necessarily. But by holding on to them, can keep you from being overwhelmed by the anxieties of life. Lord, help me hold on to your word when I am feeling choked by anxiety. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the psalm is a pilgrim hymn recounting the joy of coming into the presence of God with joy. The gladness, 
flows from a realization of the relationship the lord has with those who are members of the flock of god we pray that some now your response come before the lord singing for joy come before the lord singing for joy cry out with joy to the lord all the earth serve the lord with gladness come before him singing for joy come before the lord singing for joy know that he the lord is god he made us we belong to him we are his people the sheep of his flock come before the lord singing for joy enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with songs of praise give thanks to him and bless his name come before the lord singing for joy indeed how good is the lord eternal his merciful love he is faithful from age to age come before the lord singing for joy Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen Novena prayer to our lady of mount carmel in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen holy mother of god We greet you as queen and mother of Carmel. You were raised from being a lowly handmaid to the great dignity of the mother of the word incarnate. We dedicate ourselves as an act of filial homage. We glorify the Holy Trinity by honoring you, and in our many needs, we have recourse to your protection and your powerful intercession. Jesus your son was so obedient to you on earth will certainly grant your petitions on our behalf with this trust and unbounded confidence we beseech you to hear our prayers and obtain for us of your divine son the favors we request in this novena having experienced the efficacy of your prayers we are full of confidence that you will gain for us this favor if it is for the glory of god and for our good amen let us pray for our petitions remember o most gracious virgin mary that never was it known that any one who fled to thy protection implored thy help and sought thine intercession was left unaided inspired with this confidence I fly unto thee O virgin of virgins my mother to thee I come before thee I stand sinful and sorrowful O mother of the word incarnate despise not my petitions but in thy mercy hear and answer me amen Our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary full of grace the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. and blessed is the fruit of your womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen hail mary full of grace the lord is with you blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen hail mary full of grace the lord is with you blessed are you among women 
and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady of Mount Carmel, pray for us. Thanksgiving Prayer Holy Mother of God and Queen of Carmel, we, your children, come before you in a spirit of filial devotion and gratitude. As Mother of our spiritual life, you have obtained for us innumerable graces and blessings from our Heavenly Father, who has given to us through you the greatest of all treasures, Christ our Lord. We recognize with deep sentiments of thankfulness all the spiritual favors that have come to us through your powerful intercession. In particular, we thank you for your special protection over those who wear your holy scapula with faith and love. And finally, we thank you for answering our prayers in our personal needs. We implore from you the great grace of final perseverance that we remain faithful to the end to your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray for God's blessing. May the Lord Jesus be with you to defend you. May he be with you to sustain you. May he go before you to show you the way. May he follow you to guard you. From above, may he bless you with the Father and the Holy Spirit who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Brothers and sisters, we remember today all those who are celebrating their birthdays, especially Anthony de Souza Santos from Kuwait, Gerald Menezes from Santa Cruz, Mumbai, Richard Anil McWin from Binder, Mumbai, Ryan Jacob from Bagalpur, Bihar. Aaron Elston Dantes from Moodbidri. Claudie Hassan D'Souza from Raismal Nejar. Ethan Sian D'Souza from Sharjah. Wish you all a happy birthday. God bless you. And we pray for the departed soul of Joseph Maskurenis from Nilavar Brahmavar. May the Lord grant him eternal rest. That's all for today, my dear friends. Have a great weekend. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.